Suicide is the top 10 cause of death for people under age 65 in the US. Our research has shown that 20% or one in five of adults who die by suicide in the community, so not in jail, in the community each year, has spent at least one night in jail in the past year. Therefore, I mean, this research has found an answer to one of the biggest problems in suicide prevention, which is how do you find people at risk when they are at risk? There are known risk factors uh, for suicide and suicide attempts include, you know, mental health conditions, substance use, environment or life factors like stressful events, death, divorce, job loss, a big change, um, prolonged stress access to lethal means like firearms or drugs and exposure to other suicides, and then historical factors like previous suicide attempts or a family history of suicide attempts. Decades ago, we used to talk about suicidal tendencies. We don't talk about that anymore because it's really understood much more as um, a reaction to things in the moment of the person becoming overwhelmed in the moment. And so, you know, there's some research that shows that 70% of people who attempted suicide started thinking about it um, or deciding to do something about it within an hour of when they did it, half within five minutes. So things like lethal means restriction, you know, keeping firearms locked and safe, especially if there's children in the home, or just keeping people away from lethal means and things that they can use to kill themselves does help prevent suicide. Part of what our research has found is that the fact of a criminal legal contact, like contact with the police or spending a night in jail, actually marks suicide risk in the community. It, it's well known that there's a risk, especially right after arrest in jail, but the risk is actually higher when they get out. Um, and our point here isn't about suicide in jail, although that is important. Our point here is about people in the community who've had contact with the criminal legal system being at greatly elevated risk for suicide. Because like I said, if you're ever gonna be arrested, it's usually following a moment when things in your life are spinning out of control. National Center for Health and Justice Integration for Suicide Prevention, or NCHATS. And it's a set of eight related research projects that demonstrate and test suicide prevention approaches among these studies are the two largest randomized suicide prevention trials ever. One is 60,000 people, one is 43,000 people. And the center is not only conducting important clinical research that we hope will save lives, but it's providing training in suicide prevention and criminal legal system um, for both you know, students and faculty on the academic side, but also clinicians in the community to try to help bring these worlds together. We have projects across the country, Michigan, Massachusetts, um, Minnesota, Ohio, um, with lots of different systems. We're working with police in one project and emergency departments. We're working with um, care source, you know, Medicaid and community mental health and substance use. And the center involves more than 15 university and health systems that we're working with nationally. But more than that, I'm especially excited about our national group of partners. Um, we have organizations of people with lived experience of suicide, lived experience of criminal legal contact, prosecutors, sheriffs, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, a really fantastic group of partners that the center brings together to work across silos to prevent suicide.